Welcome to episode 3 of Adventures in Common Lisp. We're going through Peter Norvig's classic Lisp textbook, Paradigms of Artificial Intelligence Programming. Today we're looking at exercise 1.3. In this exercise, we're supposed to write a function called count atoms, which is going to take an expression e and return the number of atoms in e. Now, first of all, a refresher. In common list, all objects oops, are either atoms or cot cells. So here are some example atoms. Numbers, symbols, even arrays, not lists, arrays. These are all atoms. Also, very notably, nil, aka the empty list, is an atom. A cont cell is a pair cont A, B. Cont stands for construct. A and B can be any two objects. Cont just sticks those two things together uh, in a pair. And a list is a chain of cot cells terminated in nil, aka, again, the empty list. So some examples of what we want this function to do. If we just pass it a symbol, an atom, we want to get one, because there is only, uh, there is only one atom there, the, the atom itself. Uh, when we pass it in nil, we want to get one back as well. When we pass in a cont cell, we're going to want to get, well, it's going to be the sum of the number of atoms in here and the number of atoms in here. So in this case, it's just two, but in this case, it would be three, for example. When we pass in a list, we're going to want to get back the number of atoms in all of the elements summed together. So we don't want the length of the list. The length of this list is three. The second element is, it's got one atom, one list, and another atom, three elements. But here we want four uh, as the result from our function, one, two, three, four, four atoms. Um, so I'm going to implement this very naively, um, and this is the way that I first tried to implement it, and it actually doesn't work. Um, but let's sort of follow my, my missteps. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test whether E is an atom or not. If it is, well, 1. We return 1 uh, because E contains exactly one atom itself. Otherwise, we know that E is a cont cell, so we're going to just add together the number of atoms in the first element of the cont cell, which is called the car, and the number of atoms and the second element of the cont cell, which is called the cutter. Uh, the reason for those names is historical, but they've stuck. They're a little weird. It's just a quirk of Lisp. You'll get used to them really quickly. So this definition looked good to me, and I'm going to evaluate it, bring it into my listener, and I'm going to try to run it and see what happens. So let's just do these, uh, these tests that I wrote over there. Um, so this worked okay, we got one like we expected. This worked okay, we got one like we expected. This also works. But now, when I, when I put in a list, you can see that I got back four and not three. Uh, and the reason for that is because the internal representation of this list. You can see that this is indeed that list, uh, but the internal representation contains 
one, two, three, four atoms. So in a sense, this is technically correct, but it's not, it's not what we want. Uh, this, is, this is the spec that we want here. Uh, so what are we going to do about this? Well, we just need to be a tiny bit cleverer. Um, all we're going to do is check whether the uh, second element of the Kant pair is null, is the empty list. And if it is, then in that case, we don't add together the the atoms in both the car and the cutter, we only return the number of atoms in the car in the first element. Uh, so you can see how that's going to work here. Let's let's sort of step through it. Uh, it's going to get one atom here, and then it's going to get all the atoms in here. Uh, so that that's going to be two, two total atoms, plus the number of atoms in here, and. This here, this check is going to pass, so instead of summing together an additional two atoms, it's just going to return one extra atom. We're going to get three in total. Uh, and that's what we want. So this looks good to me. We go through these, these cases. We, we look at the expression. We test if it's an atom. If it is, then we return one. Uh, if it's not an atom, we know that it's a Kant cell. We just want to make sure it's not the tail element of a, the final element of a list. Um, if it is, we ignore the terminating null. Otherwise, we add the number of atoms in both the car and the cutter together and return that. Uh, so I'm going to compile that. Let's run through our tests again. And this time, they all pass. So there we go. There's the solution to exercise 1.3. Uh, now, the exercise does actually suggest that you can implement this in a different way interpret it slightly differently. Uh, I'm not going to cover that. That can be a fun exercise for you to do yourself. But it suggests that maybe you would want this to actually return. Well, what should it return? With our code, it returns 3 because this list has one, two, three atoms in it. Uh, it might be a little more evident if we write the empty list as nil rather than as an empty list. But you could also imagine that we'd want it to return two. After all, this list has three atoms, it seems to, to make some kind of intuitive sense that if you get rid of this two, you would be getting rid of an atom and you should be down to two atoms. The, the exercise in the book leaves it up to you to decide how you, you want to solve it. Um, this is the way that I sort of stumbled upon. It came sort of naturally uh, through my thinking process. Um, but maybe you want different semantics. Um, you want the semantics where this will return to. Uh, so that can be a fun exercise for you to try yourself to see if you can figure out the best way to do it. Um, but that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, or subscribe uh, if you enjoyed this or felt as though you learned anything. Uh, and I will see you next time for more Adventures in Common Lisp.